A tool that I'm going to be demoing to you here is going, is going to be called Doodly. Um, it's actually part of a pack of a whole bunch of tools. Um, um, part of it is also called Cartoonify, and uh, there's another um, a module that they have that allows you to animate um, a cartoon just by your own facial movements. So you can uh, be moving around and uh, pointing at things and so on, and that cartoon will follow your exact movement. But we'll probably do the training on that next week and not this week. So um, what I'm uh, going to do here is go ahead and share with you uh, my main uh, doodly screen. Uh, let me know if you can all see the screen. Um, yeah, I can see it. Perfect. Excellent. So um, just to get uh, started here, this is, um, this is a commercial application. Uh, it's about 60 US dollars uh, for the app. Um, but what I'm uh, hoping to do is, I mean, I use it for my own work, uh, so that's covered that way. But I'm hoping to do is possibly get a new bold uh, church license for it um, if, if Everton is in agreement. <laughs> and what we will then do is uh, to anyone who needs to use the tool um, uh, for New Ball School or New Ball College or New, uh, maybe not New Ball College, New Ball School and New Ball Church, then we'll have that one license that everyone can share and use at, at, at one time. So um, the modules that are primarily, uh, that I'll basically be covering today is uh, regular Doodly and also the Doodly Rainbow add-on. And next week we'll do the Toonly um, addition, which is where you can actually animate a particular cartoon. All right, but uh, to start with today, let's uh, let's get to the main uh, interface and how all of that works. So it is a video, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and say create a video. And I have multiple options here as I create that video. I can draw on a whiteboard, on a chalkboard. The glass board looks like somebody is drawing from behind the glass. So the hand is behind, it's writing backwards. Um, and uh, custom, you can have any background you want to do this. So for today, we'll just do a white back, a white board, and uh, also it's useful to uh, choose. Um, let's we'll call this demo one. It's also useful to choose a resolution um, for that uh, image, and typically for video production, you'll want to choose. Uh, something like uh, 1080p in resolution, so 1K uh, resolution. Um, but for now, we'll just settle for a lower resolution. It's just, it's just quicker to render that way. So we're going to go ahead and create that uh, board. What you'll notice is that it starts blank. Um, you, if you've made a mistake in how you set it up, you can always go back to settings and uh, define new things. For example, here I can ch change the resolution again. I can change to a, a blackboard. And I can also define the kind of hand that's going to be drawing this. So it can be a right hand. It can be a left hand. Um, and it can also be a cartoon hand. Uh, I tend to like cartoon hands. So uh, we'll... we'll um, uh, we can go with a regular hand actually. So I'll go ahead and click on apply here. And what you'll notice at the top left corner is uh, scenes. Uh, so there's a larger environments where you can start telling stories within that scene. So for example, I can drag, uh, I can turn off the black and white for now. I can drag a beach scene and there that takes my whole screen and I can then start placing characters throughout this, uh, this interface. But notice if I click on preview here, it's going to start drawing it for me. And um, that's uh, basically the animation of it being drawn. As you notice, this is taking quite a long time to draw the whole beach. I can speed up or slow down that whole, um, drawing 
simply by uh, determining on this side here, you see all of these objects that are being drawn. I can determine how long it'll take for, for example, the lighthouse to draw. So currently it's three seconds. I can type uh, one second for this one, one second for the tree, another one, whoops, one second for here, one second for the next tree, one second for the beach. And now if we play it, notice that, um, oh, I needed to save it, sorry. Uh, I need to save it first. And then if I click one second for here, one second for here, one second for here. Oh, that's just easier. Now, if I preview it, notice that the lighthouse and the trees get drawn much quicker, right? So this is a, a full scene. And uh, what I'm gonna do is delete most of it because I don't care about uh, some of those uh, items or uh, just go ahead and create a brand new uh, scene here. So I'll go ahead and create a new one called, uh, let's ch try a, a chalkboard this time. And we're gonna, we're gonna call this demo two. Uh, we'll stay with that same resolution. And this is now my demo two screen. Rather than starting with a full scene, like a classroom or beach or so, we're going to uh, just, uh, start adding objects and characters uh, to this one. So um, what you'll notice in the list uh, of items here that there's quite a lot of items and it's uh, there's about 10,000 clip arts already built in uh, to this. So it's not like you need to be drawing your own. Although there are areas or items where I want to draw my own, uh, and I'll show you a little bit later how to do that. So there are different subsections to all of this. There's one uh, that's called characters, and this is primarily people. There's another section called props. These are usually objects, like uh, I want to bring in a bacteria or a virus uh, to a picture. Um, that's where I can use that. I have a text section where I can annotate and write things. I have an audio section or a sound section where I can bring in uh, story, um, narrations or special effects. Um, and I've got a marketplace and these marketplaces are objects that you end up or collections of objects that you end up buying separately to add into your image. Having said this, you are able to bring in pictures that you draw yourself or images that you have uh, created yourself. Like for example, this Jesus uh, image here is uh, a, a PNG, a transparency image. And uh, I can bring those in uh, just by importing an image. So let's go uh, through that process right now of how to import. I'm going to stop sharing just this screen and I'll go ahead and share my whole uh, window here. And um, so what I'm gonna do is I tend to keep a list of a whole bunch of icons or PNG images, those are transparencies, uh, as an archive for myself. So if I wanted um, to if I wanted to bring in a new image, what I would do is I would click on this plus here. Actually, I might as well use it as a prop here. It's the same thing. I click a plus and here I can drag in any image I, I currently have uh, either drawn or I have downloaded from another, another place. So um, let us look for a uh, new bold school as an icon. All right, uh, so here's my new ball school, my new ball primary school icon. What I'm gonna do is just drag it in here and then it's gonna be called new ball school and continue. And now if I go to the top of my um, 
icon list, I'll see the new ball school icon already in. Uh, so typically, um, you would uh, just drag any of these icons in. So now that new ball school is in, what we can do is see how it renders. So if I click on preview, because it doesn't really know how to draw it, it'll just draw it diagonally like this. Now, if, you, if that's okay for your production, that's fine. If you want, however, to dictate to the software how to draw uh, the icon in a, in a chronological way, then what you do, you click on the imported icon or the imported image, and you click on the editing tool here, which looks like a pen. Um, I'm going to do is swap back to just sharing uh, the screen. So it, it thinks that it needs to draw it just diagonally. If I need to physically uh, hold the pen and show how to draw this, I would click then on the plus button here and I would physically start drawing lines as to how it needs to draw uh, this icon. And as you can see here in my window to the right, it starts drawing it in a, in, um, in a line path based on how I'm, how I'm telling the dots to be drawn chronologically. And I can add different paths to this. So let's just do the circle around. Uh, and that's just by clicking, uh, clicking dots around. And notice now, if I save all of this, and if I tell it to preview this animation, it'll start drawing the emblem in the center, then the circle, and then it pops with the image in the middle. So it all depends on how, how detailed you want these drawings to be. You can basically be tracing every single letter um, to make it look like it's being drawn completely. So we're gonna, we're gonna uh, do away with this, and this is another, another graphic that I imported uh, earlier today. This one's going to be used in the children's story uh, for this Sabbath as it talks briefly about, about uh, chocolate chip cookies. So if I was to preview this animation, it just draws it diagonally like this and it's not quite appealing. What I'd, li what I'd rather it do is um, draw possibly the contour uh, of this chocolate chip. So we can start simply by clicking those dots to the, the path that I'd like it to draw. And it will be a lot more accurate as it draws this. So that's the first path basically going around the cookie. Let's create another path for these circles. Uh, those chocolate bits in here. And you get the idea. So now when we actually play, when we actually play this, um, if I do a preview of this, then it's going to draw the little Whoops, uh, it's probably best to be seen on a white background. So let's switch it to this and do a preview. And there we get the cookie being drawn simply from uh, a PNG or even a JPEG image that is brought in. So um, now that you get uh, the idea of how to import an image in, into your archives, and how to have access to all of um, um, either the sceneries, the characters, and the props. We are going to actually start drawing something um, possibly related to the, to the coronavirus, just to have a little bit of fun here. So I don't need this. I'm going to delete this. And um, what we're going to do is um, find a person, um, a character in the, yeah, in the game and show that person healthy and maybe sh show that person uh, um, sick. So in our character sets, as I said, there's over 10,000 clips in here. 
these these ones at the top are by the way the ones that i've imported recently all the ones that you see down here are props that are already built in so if i start typing a name uh, for example adam i see all the character adam um together so the that per character obviously looks the same so if i take adam and uh, oh adam is scared and adam is running uh, i can just stack all of those like this if i need to have this person rotate for example i can i can use this flip uh arrow here i can scale it by take, grabbing the corner and moving it around okay um so i can also flip here now that i've built those uh five characters i can preview it and you'll see that it'll start drawing in detail the character and the um, the timing for it to draw as we've seen earlier is defined right here so three seconds for this one three seconds for this one if i have it set to zero seconds then it uh, just appears rather than uh get get itself drawn the other thing that i can do is i can choose these are just black and white uh, drawings i can choose for these characters to be color instead by just clicking on the color uh, option here and now you'll notice that um, i've got a colorized version of those drawings so if we were to redraw all of this i click on preview here and it paints the color in. So with that in mind, notice what happens if I superpose one picture over another picture or a drawing over another drawing, uh, something like this. And uh, just for the sake of time, we'll just have those two characters here. So if I preview this, notice the hand ends up erasing the area where the next picture needs to be those are all configurable uh, but for the most part i kind of like that uh, that effect so we're going to keep it this way if you want this character in the back uh this character here to be in front of this character here then it's simply a matter of changing the order of those characters by dragging them around and now the color version will be drawn first and then the black and white version will be drawn second so let's try this Good. there we go so down down here is what we call the storyboard uh, or the timeline if you want so i can set those timelines to be a, of a particular length uh, and and time and I can create multiple storyboards that would then illustrate the story. So let's say we start um, we start with uh, this, um, then we move to another storyboard, and uh, we are having uh, Adam being so he ran and now we can have him being uh, scared uh, and maybe a little bit bigger and he's probably scared because um let's say there's a virus in the air so um do i have yes there we go so we've got a uh, bacteria uh floating around in the air okay so now if we go back oops from a timing perspective this is going to take three seconds let's decrease it to about uh, one second and this one uh, is one second and the drawing uh, of the character adam will be two seconds so now if we rewind time we go back to here and we do a preview so it starts with adam running then it moves over to the next storyboard 
with um, a different image. Or, uh, and I can keep on adding those storyboards like this. Um, so over here we can, uh, let's see, do I have a microscope? Yes. There we go. So on this next slide, we can show a microscope and maybe uh, some blood cells. Let's see if I have a blood cell. There we go. And uh, do I have a bubble? Uh, this is not quite the micro microscope speaking, but this could illustrate what a person is seeing in the microscope. So here my order is, is wrong. I need to have the, um, the virus and the blood cells above the bubble. Therefore, I'll just drag this down this way and uh, rescale it. And there we go. So let's see how, how long is that going to take to draw? Let's decrease it a little bit. Um, and that should do. So let's go ahead and save this and then preview the whole thing. So we've got Adam running. Then he catches a flu. And then looking in the microscope, we're seeing his blood cells with a virus. All right, so this is a very simple uh, uh, short storyboard. Um, I can then export this as a full video. Um, and it's typically an MPEG-4 video that I can use and uh, set the resolution, set the frame rate, and it'll export for me a video that I can then embed into another pr uh, presentation. At the same time, however, I can add a narration down here. Um, I can actually speak right, uh, right uh, into my microphone. If I click on the plus here, it'll record my narration. So testing, one, two, three. This is Adam. He is scared. He's running. And he catches a flu. And, uh, and looking through the microscope, uh, we can see the, the virus. And stop. So now you can see my narration down here. If we rewind this to the beginning and start previewing so, it. Testing, one, two, three. This is Adam. He is scared. He's running. And he catches a flu. And, uh, Looking through the microscope, uh, we can see the, the virus. Yeah, I didn't rehearse that, uh, that narration, but you get the idea. So uh, you're therefore able to, uh, just with your voice, record a narration, add, I'm going to delete this for now, um, add uh, the animation that goes with it, that, uh, with the right timing, and the storyboard and uh, pretty much be, be done with that kind of production in a very short time. And naturally, uh, from a kid's perspective, this is um, quite uh, um, interesting and um, they are able to catch a lot of, that, uh, of those ideas in, uh, very quickly, especially from a visual perspective. So, um, so far, are there any questions? I see, Lucas, you wrote, uh, how can you make it right? Um, all right, Lucas, um, let me show you how we're going to write something on, on the animation here. So let's go back to sharing the screen. OK, go back to our demo. And over here, if I need to r add a, a text, um, I can just click on the text icon here, choose the font that I want, uh, maybe Arial, and just drag it in and, and start writing. So over here, uh, this uh, is Adam.
So any writing that you do will stack itself up just the same as you um, as you uh, have uh, the other icons. So if you want the writing to happen before um, the character, then it's just a matter of dragging in on top. Um, so let's try previewing this. So this is Adam, and then there he is. So on the next screen here, we can write another text with a different font. Um, how do you spell achoo? Like this. So we can have Adam say achoo and look for a bubble. And uh, this bubble can be blue. All right, so we'll scale it so it fits right here. And uh, what do you think I should do to put the achoo in the box? Because if I move it like this, it's behind, right? So this is the order of, of how things are stacked. Whatever is on top, uh, whatever is higher ends up being on top. So I need to uh, put the achoo uh, in that order. And there, uh, there we go. So um, again, if we want to preview this now. So we would want the achoo to happen right after we draw Adam, right? So we'll move this up and we'll move the achoo right there. So that will show up before the viruses uh, show up here. So let's play it again. There we go. Yeah, so Joshua, you're asking um, if you can change the transition between the different um, the different drawings. Absolutely. You can make it so each of your storyboards is actually part of a much larger drawing and it just zooms into that one story. You have another option of, of fading across uh, storyboards. And uh, let me show you where that is configured. Um, let me share the screen again. So as you click under settings over here, there is an option called scene transition. OK? So, um, so we were using the default one, which is a swipe left. Um, you have other options like a, a camera panning uh, options. And let's just see how that looks. So we'll apply this and we'll do a preview again to see how it looks like. Oh, I didn't quite see the transition. Uh, This happens to be the one that I used last Sabbath, the camera panning option. Um, it's, it's probably a bit too quick for us to see the animation. What it does is that it uh, basically zooms out of that storyline and zooms into another storyline. Um, let's just, just to make the animation quicker, I'll just delete this one and replay it here. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure if you're able to see it on, on your screen. It's really quickly, but it moves over to a different section of the, of the storyline. There we go. So it's, it's really uh, when you compile the video um, that you end up uh, seeing, uh, seeing the storyline. Um, Oh, the nice animation of the transition. Uh, Jason, another question for, from you is, can you pause the video? 
Um, yeah, you can. What you can do is, let's say if you know exactly how long you want it to pause, then um, you can add a storyline uh, section with no drawings on it and it's just blank for a certain period of time. Um, if you if you wanted to pause but be manually be able to control when the next part of the story starts, uh, maybe Jackie, this is appropriate for you as you're telling a story from a PowerPoint and uh, you don't know how long you're going to be spending some time on that particular scene, then rather than creating uh, one single project, you would create multiple projects um, with one scene as one video. So in PowerPoint, you just play that one video and once it gets to the end of that, it just stays there until you hit uh, your next screen, your next slide on your PowerPoint, which then plays the second uh, slide. Um, so that's, there's multiple ways then of, of pausing it. Um, can you change the backgrounds, uh, asks Rivka. Um, yes, so Rivka, in, um, let me share my screen again here, down here. So if we click on settings and you click on custom here, you can, you can upload any custom background that you want um, to, to the drawing. So you can have a full picture if you want there. Uh, let me show you briefly uh, one, uh, one environment that I was uh, working on. Um, let's see, I should have this under... Maybe I'm going to come to my apartment. Well, hi. There we go. So I've taken a picture of Newbold uh, Church and I've turned it into a drawing in Photoshop. All right, so the, I can end up using this as kind of like a welcome uh, to today's storyline. So what I've done with it as well is if I click on edit here, you'll see a lot of drawing paths in here. So um, it ends up looking like someone's drawing it. Um, if I take a little bit more time to draw every window here, it will really look uh, look the par. Um, let me add another path here, just just to look cool. And this is kind of like hands drawing the trees and the shrubs in the area. So I'm going to save and return. And now if I do a preview of this storyboard, notice how I can adjust the timing of each of these slides simply by dra dragging those lines here. So if we do a preview, this is yeah, Adam. And that's this drawing the new old uh, church environment. So you can either change the whole background or you can actually convert a picture to a drawing and then have that as, as your scene. That's great, thank you. So Scott, uh, you're saying your children's story has both video and audio integrated with Doodly, yes. So um, what I use is, uh, I, I happen to be on a Mac, so I use iMovie and uh, Final Cut Pro. So let me show you the iMovie project of uh, how I incorporated the, the video uh, of the drawing and uh, the narration itself. So let me share my screen again. So here, it's, this is another software now. This is um, iMovie. So it's a free software if you have an Apple device. Uh, yes. Premiere or, um, uh, or also would, would do the same. So what I've done here is at the bottom, I've sat, I have the video of the pastor narrating the story. And on top here, I've basically render just the animation once and then I have cut it, I've spliced it uh, for it to fit in different areas. So let me just quickly show you 
uh, just the animation itself. Yeah. So, I'll take and there we go. So this is just the animation um, that comes out of Doodly. Uh, it has no narration to it. It is just uh, scenes. Notice this is one scene. This is another scene. Um, this is yet a third scene. And what I've ended up doing is um, I've basically cut it. So after this one scene, uh, I can right click here and call F and click on split clip and now I've got two separate clips. Once I've cut all of those storylines um, separately, cut it again here, uh, I can then take them as chunks and move them to the right timeline and the right uh, part of the storyline where I would illustrate uh, um, that. And whatever video comes on top basically trumps or erases the video that's at the bottom and that's how I get to, at a certain time, see the cartoon and another time see the pastor himself. Any other questions so far? Thanks. Hey, this is Scott. If you don't mind, a quick follow-up. Sure. Um, it, so it appears then from a basic oh, workflow, yeah. you have your story probably first, <laughs> then you're editing the content and the cartoons on top. And if you want to stay with just Pardon audio, me. you can do that within Doodly proper. And yes. if you need the video, then you need another tool like Final Cut or whatever you have for editing video. Exactly. Now, um, if, that's if you want to put uh, real, real videos of, of a person narrating it. Uh, as I've shown on, on Doodly, if you're able to record directly in Doodly, then you don't even need to record that bit. You do everything in Doodly. You just won't have an actual physical person uh, captured there. It'll all be cartoon. Um, so next next week, what I'm what I can show you guys, uh, if you're interested, is how to actually animate a character. So uh, if you've got uh, if you oh yeah, let me show you let me show you a couple of our, of um, of the characters here before we leave today. Um, so I'm going to, again, share with you this. And what I'm going to do is go back. Uh, I can discard this. This happens to be the animation I did for last week. So um, this is Carter. This is Carter's school and his broken house. This is him uh, not being very happy about the school. So this I rendered as a single video that I ended up cutting around. But again, you can do the whole narration uh, on your own, just staying in Doodly. What I would, what I would do is, is possibly have the narration first, at least the audio narration, um, and then start building the animations over it if you want to just stay in the animation or in the Doodly uh, interface. Um, one more thing I want to show you uh, is, um, uh, the different characters. So last week I used a character called Brand, uh, Brad. So let me show you, again, there's 10,000 characters here. So uh, let me just pick on Brad here. And you'll recognize Brad from last week, yeah? So this character has quite a lot of different scenes uh, already depicted. What we will look at to next week is taking a character like Brad and using your webcam on your on your um, on your uh, laptop or desktop or whatever, and you're, you'd be able to to animate the face of Brad just by acting how he should be looking like. And you should be, and uh, your camera will pick up your hands, will pick up your face, and actually the whole body. And based on how you are um, moving your body, that character will animate just the same way. So, um, so that's going to be next week. But for for only this week, I'm just showing you. I'm only showing you uh, well, all the characters that Brad already has. 
And um, with these characters, you can already tell quite a lot of stories, right? So I probably need a chair for these two here. So let's go to my props, um, look for a chair, one that would look appropriate for Brad sitting would be this one. We will need to rotate it this way and uh, scale it to his height, but he'll need to be above the chair. So that chair here needs to come this way. So there he is sitting. So if we want to, if we want to see just that animation, uh, let's preview it. Oh, there's Brad. There's the chair. Notice it'll, it'll erase a section of the chair and draw Brad above it. Uh, last week, I think I used a school chair, something like this. But you get you get the idea. So uh, that's uh, that's about it for today. Um, I am about to start drawing uh, the children's story for this Sabbath. I don't know if any of you have had the chance to listen to the story. Um, so it involves cookies, it involves bats, it involves caves, uh, rescue policemen and firemen and so on. So what I tend to do when I, when I already know the story and I'm, and I'm trying to put all of those uh, characters together is I would, uh, um, I would basically dump all of those images in one slide um, without worrying about the, the, the posture, the angle, or the, just so I can use those characters without having to search later on for characters here. So um, the, um, we have three characters. We have a boy and two of his friends. So we can again use a character uh, like Brad. Then uh, we have another person and I've already looked into some of the characters. So I'm looking for a person by the name of Ethan. There's Ethan. And then I have another character call, uh, called Hans in here. So what we can do is have Hans be the person that actually falls he looks like he's falling here uh, in into that crevasse. And uh, so there would be my three characters. Then um, I've got a policeman. Oh, by the way, I could have done all of that in color, right? So I can do, um, I can do hands here in color instead. Yeah, and uh, we need a prop of a cave. So I've got uh, a cave that looks like this. I also have a more, whoops. Um, let's see, do I have an ecological? Yes, here I should find a nicer cave, probably something like this. This is from a scientific journal, so it's going to write the, the cows, the, yeah. So we'll just use that cave and hide the... Uh, Ça va, madame? Yeah, monsieur. <laughs> so, so here's our cave. Now what we need to do is find a bat under, under our props. Let's see. Hopefully there's a bat. Yes, there's a bat. Do we want to use a colorful bat or a black and white black bat? Nah, call the black and white should be fine. So there, there's basically our start of, um, of our storyline. So if we were to preview this, it would look like uh, Brad, Ethan, and Hans. Hans is in color, I think, yes. And then the drawing of the cave. 
and the bat flying out of a cave. All right, so uh, it's really just then a matter of, of listening to the timeline uh, of the storyline and uh, matching uh, pictures uh, or workflows to the, the part of the story that illustrates that bit. So um, here is how I would start. What I would do here is I would add the audio clip of the story. So if I go to audio, I import the audio by clicking on this plus here, and then I'm dragging in the MP3 or the WAV file to, to this area. Once it's in, then I can drag that audio file to the narration bit, which is down here. Uh, and as we now do the preview, Good morning, boys and girls, and thank you very much for joining us this morning. His name is Morris. Morris had two very good, good friends, brothers, Billy and Sam. All right, so, uh, so that's basically how you would, you would end up doing it. Um, I would, uh, for the good morning, I would put a welcome um, uh, slide here followed by the introduction of the three characters uh, on the second slide, followed by the cave later on, or I think a bus going over to the trip. And uh, that's how would, I would end up building that storyline uh, to, uh, to match the story. All right, so uh, from, from your perspective, um, does that look complicated, uh, overwhelming, or does that look uh, pretty straightforward? Mrs. Chrissy, what do you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you can you unmute yourself unmute. and then we can, <laughs> we can. You can unmute her. There you, oops, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it depends on the skills level that each person has um, and I think it would take a lot of playing around with and getting used to um, it's just like anything else you, you need to become familiar with it so exactly. if you purchase this um, how do you go about that don't worry about purchasing this because I'm thinking of purchasing this under the under the company new world school and call and uh, church uh, okay. that way uh, this is my personal uh, commercial license, but I would have a, uh, a license for the church and the school, as it's the same institution pretty much, um, and uh, have uh, any of you use that account and, and build uh, whatever stories that you're building. The only, the only uh, aspect that you'll notice is that if let's say Everton is building a storyline for you know 10 Sabbaths down the road when the pandemic is over and uh, uh, Jackie you're building a story for the primary school you you will see in your interface the other people's stories all right okay yeah. but if you don't mind seeing each other's stories that way so this is always going to look like um, uh, okay, you. um <laughs> you will end up seeing the stack of these other stories that other people within the company or the, the, the organization have used. You'll see all of these listed up here. If you don't mind that, then we can definitely save by buying one license and sharing that license uh, among Sounds ourselves. Good. Sounds really good. Yeah. Uh, that's been really helpful, Daryl. Thank you very much. I really loved what you did with the children's Sabbath school story last time. And I thought it just, took yeah. it on to a level that was very accessible for the children, you know, because they want to see as well as look. So that was great. Thank you. And, and maybe Everton, this can uh, go right into uh, the sermon as well. You know, how would we illustrate yeah. the sermon, uh, let's say a creation bit, you know? So uh, yeah. again, uh, it, might look, uh, it might look like this. Well, starting on a chalkboard, black, uh, oh, I start on the glass version this time. And uh, in my sceneries here, you know what? There's a few Bible stories that they already have. Uh huh. There it is. Um, and 
so that's already built in the software. You know, you don't need to, you don't need to be building, you don't need to be drawing this by hand. These, these are what's already in the story in the archive. All right, so, okay. So there we go. And uh, what we're gonna do here is adjust uh, the timing a little bit. Are okay. those Bible stories purchased on a, on a certain no. website or not? No, it comes, it comes standard with Doodly. Okay. Yeah. So notice when he's drawing as a glass, he's drawing behind the glass and his hands out of focus. So, yeah, yeah. So um, we can quickly go into settings here and change that to blackboard and change the hand to a cartoon and see how, um, if I now run the preview, then it's completely, it's completely changed the look and feel of that drawing. But with just a couple of clicks, then the story looks completely different. No, no, it's very easy, yeah. Very intuitive, very nice. Yeah, so I, I didn't add those Bible stories there. They were built into Doodly, but you're more than welcome to build on those and, and add, add those kinds of, of resources. The good thing is that if you import an image into our, our enterprise license of New Ball Church, then other people can use the same clip arts. Sure. Uh, yeah. so if you want to draw, for example, the statue of Nebuchadnezzar in there or import a picture or drawing from somebody else, uh, then everybody else benefits from that image being there and can reuse it. Right, okay. Uh, just one thing I was noticing. Uh, you know when you had, for instance, you, you draw on the top, like if you import a, a normal image, then you draw on the top, yeah. like you did for the logo or for uh, yeah. the church background. Is there any way can you mask the line to be exactly what it was, the original drawing? Absolutely. It just takes you more time to, uh, or possibly a superposition of a couple of PNG images. Yeah. All right. Uh, that way, that way you can you can uh, uh, basically uh, template it better or, or layer it better. Uh, okay. It all depends how, you know, if it only shows up on screen for about three seconds, there's no point in making, investing in making a big deal of it. But if it's going to show, if it's going to be reused quite often, then it's very much, basically what you're doing is as you're importing a PNG or a JPEG image into the system, as you create the, la the drawing path, it vectorizes this for you and then it turns that into a timed drawing.